Let's talk the math of stock trading for beginners and the good news here, it's very easy. And I should note this does not only pertain to the stock market and stocks, it pertains to the cryptocurrency market, to the Forex market, to any financial market that is out there. This math here is going to pertain to your situation. I also wanna just respect your time. If you are here somehow looking for very complicated math, that's not, this is the basics. This is a just good old fashioned investing trading 101 video. So there's not gonna be any sort of extremely complicated math at all. And also on that note, I'm not here to impress you. My ultimate goal is when you're done with this video for you to be saying, I can't believe I just watched that video. I can't believe that that's how easy it is. Really, that, that that's the math you need to understand. Because again, it's not complicated at all, but when you're new and you don't know what you don't knew, know and you're a beginner at all this, then yeah, you, you do just wanna make sure. So that's what I wanna do is just establish the basics of how the math works. And to do this, I just wanna go through a couple of the various situations and to get a little uh, you know, terminology out of the way. So I'm gonna be operating that you do wanna buy a stock. So this is you, this is anybody that's out there in this day and age, as long as you get an online broker, then yes, you have access to the stock market and you can buy stock. And this right here is gonna represent obviously our stock. Quick little note, you don't, this doesn't exist anymore in terms of getting a paper certificate. Now back in the olden days, yes, you would get literally a piece of paper that says you own stock. But this is just for visual purposes. Another bit of terminology is in regards to this stock, is yes, it's stock of a company, but then you can buy a certain amount of shares. So what you wouldn't wanna say is, okay, so how many stocks of this can I buy? Because what you're really saying is, no, no, no. If you were to buy 10 stocks, that means you're wanting to buy 10 different companies. But within the same company, so you wanna buy shares of that stock. You can buy 100 shares, you can buy 10 shares, you can buy 17 shares. The point being is when you're talking about things, about a specific company's stock, you are now talking about shares. So in this situation, to start off the math, let's just say that this share right now of this stock is worth $15, right? That's the price, and that's what you're gonna go and pay for it. So the question becomes, okay, well, how many shares can you buy? You have 500, the price is 15, so how many can you buy? And so over here, the math here is very simple. You're gonna take the amount of money you have, and you're gonna divide that by whatever the price is. So in this situation, 15. So here, you would be able to go and buy 33 shares of that stock. So hopefully everybody's following right now. Now, you're, why, why would you even buy a stock? Well, you're buying a stock because you're making an investment. Why are you making an investment? Well, because you, you're, you're hopefully, hopefully the value goes up, right? You're hoping that that company does well, that they make new products, create better services, and that's gonna ultimately make their stock more valuable, right? That is the hope. Not That's not gonna be the guaranteed what happens, but that is the hope, which brings about probably the, the, the most important and the most kind of, uh, you know, question in terms of, okay, well, so how do I, how, basically, how do I calculate profits? How do I calculate losses? And like I said, it doesn't get any more complicated. It's still very easy. So in our little world here, again, you bought at $15, and let's just say, you know what? You made a good decision, and the stock right here ultimately goes up and is now worth, $21 to use the terminology per share. So per share, one share is now worth $21. So the question becomes, okay, well, how much in value did the stock go up? Did that share go up? And again, I'm truly not trying to insult your intelligence, but so how would you calculate that? Well, you would take 21, it's new value, and you would subtract it from 15, right? And now right there you have, well, that share has gone up $6. So your share is worth $6 more. So how much total have you made? Well, let's think about it. We said you were able to buy 33 shares and it just went up by $6. So all you gotta do is multiply that out. 33, because that's how many shares you own, per what was the gain? $6. So we're gonna multiply that by 33. And in this situation, you have now made $198 in profit. But you know you can't be perfect, nobody's perfect. So again, you bought at 15, but let's say in this situation, I don't know, bad news 
happens. The, I, the, the company does a bunch of bad stuff. They're not getting creative. Just for whatever reason, all of a sudden, shares of that stock drop and are now $11. So going back to the same line of logic, okay, well, how much did those shares go down in value? Well, okay, Clay, you, you, you said they were at 15 and then they dropped down to 11. So that means it was $4. But the key here is it was $4 in the downwards direction. Meaning from a math perspective, you gotta put a negative sign right there, right? Because technically it's negative four from where you bought since it's gone down. So the math plays out the same exact way, just uh, you know, in an unfavorable way, meaning you had, so nothing has changed here, right? You still have 33 shares. But in this situation, because things have gone down, you need to put that negative number in there and negative what? Well, negative $4 per share. So they've gone down negative four, uh, $4. So you get out there and, and same thing, gotta multiply now. So what would that be? So let's do this, you have 33 shares, you have to multiply it by negative four, and that means, this calculator, there we, there is the negative. I was gonna say, what's going on here? So negative four, there we go, multiplied by 33, means you have now lost $132 on your investment. So what about this then? Maybe you're saying, okay, yeah, yeah, I understand just the profit and loss, but let's say that I, I, I'm, I'm more so, okay, how do I calculate like the return on investment? So in this situation, or let's go back to that first uh, situation. So again, 33 shares, and you multiply that by the amount it went up, and our example went up by $6. So right here, Six times 33 equals 198. So how do you calculate the ROI, the return on investment? Well, this one, you're gonna take the 198, because again, that's how much you made, and you're gonna divide it by how much you put it into the first place, which in this situation was $500. So 198 divided by 500 equals 0.396. Now think back to, to school. How do you convert that into an actual percentage? Super easy, right? Just multiply it by 100 times 100. Convert the decimal to a percentage. Multiple. And again, your broker is gonna be doing all this stuff for you anyways, but just as an FYI, right? To be a, a broadly educated investor and trader, you need to know this stuff. So multiply that, and there you go. On this, you know, to sound cool, that to impress your friends, on this investment, you had an ROI of 39.6%. But what about the flip side of things? So same exact thing. You had 500, and then you had 132. But what's the key part here? Well, the key part here is that it was a negative. So negative 132, because you were actually losing. So when we bring that over here, negative 132 divided by the total amount, you have a negative 0.264, and again, gotta convert that to a decimal by 100. So in this situation, you did not have a return on investment. You actually lost. You lost, what's from a percentage standpoint, you lost 26.4%. Another thing in a situation you'll need to remember, more so from an investing standpoint, is a dividend. And dividends are just payments that are being given to you, and they are paid per share. So in this situation, let's just say that for this stock that you bought, and again, own 33 shares of, let's just say that the dividend, so that's the terminology, the dividend per share is $1.25. So how much are you getting paid in dividends? Most, usually per year. Uh, it can always vary, but for simplicity's sake, let's just say per year, how much are you getting paid to simply just hold on to the stock, to invest? And again, I'm not trying to tell your intelligence, but okay. Well, Clay, you said we have 33, and if they pay $1.25 per share and we own 33 shares, well, 33 times $1.25 means that you're getting paid as an investor $41.25 every year for just simply holding the stock. 
So that's how to invest, or that's how a dividend would uh, work. Now, what about a dividend yield? Or in other words, the percentage that comes with that. Well, that just comes based off of, and the yield is always changing. Why is the yield, the percentage always changing? Well, because that's gonna be dependent on the actual price of the stock. So yes, when you first bought it, at fifteen dollars, that's what we're going to keep. You know, uh, you know, keep this math based on. So right here, same exact as the ROI, right? What is the ROI? You can look at it like that. Well, let's just go with it's a dollar twenty-five divided by per share, which means this stock. And let's convert that to the percentage times one hundred. That means in this situation, that is an eight point three percent yield. However, remember that's the yield that when you bought it. So your yield is 8.3%, but let's just say that over time, and we'll go with the next example where it rises and it goes up to, uh, what did I say, 21, so to 21. So now what would the dividend yield be? Now remember, nothing has changed. Per share, it's still $1.25. But if somebody else is now looking and saying, okay, well, what, what's my yield gonna be on, on you know this situation? Same math, $1.25 divided by, well, in this situation, 21, which means the yield now is 0.059. So that's the other thing is when, when you get a really good entry point, you're gonna have a better dividend percentage yield. Not a better dividend per share, but you're gonna be able to buy more shares, which is what's driving up that yield. We're on the flip side of things. Let's say you bought, you know, again at 15, but when it goes down to that 11, well, now what would you have? You could be sitting here saying, okay, well, it's $1.25 per share, and that price is now $11 per share. Well, in this situation, $1.25 divided by 11 means an 11.4% yield. So in other words, yeah, by, by buying too soon, you're not gonna get as good of a percentage yield. So that's, you know, and that, that, so how do you know when it's the best yield? Well, welcome to the wonderful world of investing and trying to figure out, okay, when is that stock price? When is that stock at a good price where that dividend yield's probably not gonna get any better? And that's just one of the, the great challenges of the market and why I love the market because you, you just never know things like that. And just to wrap things up here, this is uh, as an FYI and nothing fancy, but okay, Clay, I, I hear people talking about account growth. W what exactly is account growth? Uh, and it's exactly what it sounds like, but you know, to wrap it up with this example here, so we had our 33 shares. We said that you made $6 per share, which you would think I'd have that memorized by now. What is that, 198? I don't remember. Time so, yeah, 198. So account growth, what does that actually mean though? Like how, how does the broker operate? Well, that means that this 198 is put into that account. So in other words, you no longer have $500. In this situation, you would take that and you would add it onto whatever you had. So now in this situation, you would have a total of $698. And then if you were to go and find another stock, the same thing repeats itself. Well, what is the price of that stock? And I don't know, let's just say this one is $71. And I'm not gonna take you through it again, you understand the math, but that's how you grow an account because any profit you make is added on to what's ever in your account already. And that's how you can start to you know compound and compound and it gets bigger and bigger. Now, of course, you wanna be smart because in the example where you lost money, well, that instead of adding to $500, we would be subtracting. 500 or you, you would be subtracting from $500. So that's the difference there. But I, I think you understand enough to know how to subtract that out from $500, whatever that losing amount would be. But that is the basics of the math of stock trading. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated, nothing challenging. Like I said, you're probably watching this video saying, I can't believe I just watched all that. that that's very straightforward. And, and it really is. It's all about how much money do you have? What is the cost per share? And then after that, has the share price gone up in value or down in value by how much. And whatever that is, whether it's up or down, all you do is multiply that by however many shares you have, and then you have the, your profit or your loss, and then from there you can start to divide it out uh, relative to the amount that you put in to start to figure out either you know the return on investment or the, the percentage that you lost. Um, and then you know dividend, same exact thing. So literally just a little bit of multiplication, some division, 
and it's as straightforward and easy as that. So hopefully you found this helpful. And now I have, because I'm always getting uh, you know questions in the, the comment section. Um, so now I can link people to this video and say, hey, yeah, this is the math, nothing complicated. It's truly as straightforward as that. So hopefully this helps everybody take care and have a good one. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm gonna to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.